It is you, Ragab. Yes, Master. The hours of the night are few. The casting process for the 1944 film, often referred to as The Mummy's Curse, was a meticulous task. Lon Chaney Jr., an actor known for his versatility, was a natural choice for the lead role. Having already established a name in horror flicks, he brought the necessary gravitas to the character. The role of the female lead was given to Peggy Morin. The film's director, Leslie Goodwins, had worked with Morin before and was confident in her ability to bring depth to the character. Morin's chemistry with Chaney was evident from their first screen test, making them a perfect fit for the film. Kurt Catch, a seasoned actor, was cast as the eccentric archaeologist. His experience in playing scholarly characters made him a perfect fit. His audition showcased his ability to portray the character's quirks and mannerisms convincingly. The role of the Cajun guide was given to Martin Koslek. His thick accent and rugged appearance made him ideal for the part. Koslek's audition, where he effectively portrayed the guide's wariness and suspicion, sealed the deal. The film's supporting cast was filled with actors who had already proven their mettle in the industry. Their auditions showcased their understanding of their characters and their ability to bring them to life. The chemistry tests further confirmed their compatibility, making the casting process a smooth one. In the end, the cast of the movie was a perfect blend of experience and talent, each actor bringing their unique strengths to the table. The chemistry between them added an extra layer of depth to the film, making it a memorable watch. Delving into the making of the 1944 film, one discovers the director's unique approach to bringing the show to life. The director, known for his distinct style, drew creative inspiration from various sources. For this movie, he drew influence from early Egyptian mythology, weaving together a tale of mystery and horror. The director's vision was to create an atmosphere of suspense, using the shadowy sets and dim lighting to his advantage. Collaboration with the cast and crew was crucial. He worked closely with the cinematographer to achieve the desired visual effects, often using innovative camera angles and techniques. The cast was guided through their roles with careful direction, ensuring each character's motivation and actions serve the story. The director's style is characterized by his ability to build tension and create a sense of unease. He does this not by relying on jump scares, but rather through the careful manipulation of light and shadow, sound, and the actor's performances. In the film, this is evident in the scenes where the mummy comes to life. The dim lighting and eerie silence create a sense of anticipation, making the appearance of the mummy all the more startling. The director's approach to storytelling is methodical and well thought out. He believes in creating a rich and immersive world for the audience to step into, one that is both visually stunning and emotionally engaging. In the show, this is achieved through the meticulous attention to detail in the set design, costumes, and makeup. Every aspect of the production is carefully crafted to serve the story and enhance the overall viewing experience. The director's collaborative spirit also extends to working with the cast and crew. He believes in fostering a creative environment where ideas can be freely exchanged and explored. This approach not only leads to a more cohesive production, but also allows for the discovery of unique and innovative solutions to creative challenges. In the movie, this collaborative spirit is evident in the seamless integration of the various elements of production. The result is a captivating and chilling tale that has stood the test of time. Let's talk about the 1944 movie that has captured audiences for generations. The film is an intriguing blend of horror and adventure with a gripping storyline that keeps you on the edge of your seat. This movie has many enduring qualities that make it an everlasting symbol of the industry. Its unique plot, memorable characters, and stunning visuals have stood the test of time, making it a must-watch for fans of classic cinema. Did you know that the movie was actually the final installment in a series of films featuring the same central character? or that the film's production was plagued by a series of bizarre accidents and mishaps, leading some to believe that the set was truly cursed? As we delve deeper into the fascinating history of this movie, you'll discover many funny, shocking, and even sad facts that will leave you wanting to know more. Do you have a most cherished memory or personal experience related to this movie?
We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. So sit back, relax, and let's explore the captivating world of this classic film. From its humble beginnings to its enduring legacy, there's so much to discover about this timeless masterpiece. Get Rog and some of the other workmen to go along. We'll cover every trail tonight. Let's journey back to 1944, the year a chilling movie was produced. The set design for this film was a marvel, with eerie swamps and gloomy mansions that sent shivers down viewers' spines. The film's swamp scenes were shot in a specially constructed set at Universal Studios. It featured murky waters, twisted tree, and hanging moss, creating an atmosphere of dread and mystery. The mansion, on the other hand, was a gothic masterpiece filled with shadowy corners and spiral staircases. The movie was primarily filmed on sound stages allowing the creators to control every aspect of the environment. However, this came with its own set of challenges. Creating consistent weather conditions, managing lighting to mimic natural daylight, and ensuring continuity across scenes were all complex tasks. One innovative technique employed during production was the use of optical printers to create complex visual effects. These machines allowed filmmakers to combine multiple layers of film to produce supernatural phenomena such as the mummy's ethereal appearances and disappearances. The logistical challenges were not limited to set design and filming techniques. The mummy's makeup was a time-consuming process, taking up to eight hours to apply each day. Lon Chaney Jr., who played the mummy, had to arrive at the studio very early in the morning to begin his transformation. Despite these challenges, the crew managed to complete the film on schedule, delivering a thrilling cinematic experience that has stood the test of time. The Mummy's Curse remains a classic example of 1940s horror cinema, its chilling sets, and innovative effects continuing to captivate audiences today. What has happened to me? I woke up. The movie, often referred to as The Mummy's Curse, takes us back to 1944, when it was first released. This film is a part of a series of movies featuring the character of the Mummy. The Mummy, brought to life by a curse, is on a quest to find his lost love. The film's lead, Karras, is portrayed by Lon Chaney Jr. Chaney, born on February 10, 1906, was no stranger to horror movies, having played the role of the Wolfman in several films. His portrayal of the mummy is equally compelling, showcasing his versatility as an actor. The female lead, Ananka, is played by Virginia Christine. Christine, who was born on March 5, 1920, had a long and successful career in film and television spanning over four decades. Her portrayal of Ananka adds a layer of depth to the character, making her more than just a damsel in distress. The movie was directed by Leslie Goodwins, who was born in London in Wedi 1899. Goodwins had a prolific career in the film industry, directing over 50 films between 1921 and 1951. His direction in The Mummy's Curse adds a sense of suspense and intrigue, keeping the audience engaged throughout the film. The film's special effects, while not as advanced as those we see today, were quite impressive for the time. The scene where the mummy rises from his tomb is particularly well done, creating a sense of awe and fear. In conclusion, The Mummy's Curse is a classic horror film that has stood the test of time. Its compelling characters, suspenseful direction, and impressive special effects make it a must-watch for any classic movie fan. Self-ordained caretaker of this monastery. I thought this place was abandoned. This house of worship. The Mummy's Curse, released in 1944, is a classic horror film that has captivated audiences for generations. A significant aspect of the movie's appeal lies in its haunting musical score and soundtrack, which complement the narrative and emotional tone of the show. The film's score was composed by Hans J. Salter, a prolific composer known for his work in the horror and thriller genres. Salter's music for The Mummy's Curse is characterized by its eerie, atmospheric quality, which perfectly captures the mood of the movie. Salter drew inspiration from a variety of sources when composing the score for The Mummy's Curse. In an interview, he once stated, I like to use unconventional instruments and sounds to create a sense of unease and mystery. This approach is evident in the film score, which features unusual instrumentation and dissonant harmonies that add to the overall sense of dread. The soundtrack also features several memorable musical cues, including the film's iconic main theme. This theme, which is heard during the opening credits, sets the tone for the entire movie and establishes the eerie, supernatural atmosphere that pervades the show. 
In addition to the score, The Mummy's Curse also features several source music cues, including traditional Egyptian music and spooky organ music that adds to the film's haunted house vibe. The musicians involved in the creation of the score and soundtrack for The Mummy's Curse also played a crucial role in bringing the music to life. The film's orchestra, led by conductor Frank Bastone, consisted of some of the top studio musicians of the time, and their skill and artistry are evident in every note of the score. In conclusion, the musical score and soundtrack for The Mummy's Curse are an essential part of the film's enduring appeal. Through his innovative use of unconventional instruments and sound, composer Hans J. Salter created a musical landscape that perfectly complements the narrative and emotional tone of the show, making it a true classic of the horror genre. Have you studied archaeology? Archaeology? No. In the 1944 film, a notable scene shows Princess Ananka, played by Virginia Christine, rising from the dead in a swamp. The scene has an eerie quality due to the use of undercranking, which speeds up the action. However, the overly fast movements of the branches around her give away the trick. Boris Karloff, who plays a key role in the movie, had an interesting professional background. On his marriage certificate to Grace Harding, he listed his profession as broker, which is presumed to be in real estate. At the time, he lived in Hornby Mansions, indicating a life of luxury and a plush job in a prestigious firm. During the production of Frankenstein in 1931, there were concerns that Marilyn Harris, who played Maria, would be frightened by Karloff's appearance. However, when they arrived at the location, Marilyn approached Karloff, who was in full makeup and costume, and asked if she could ride with him. Delighted, he agreed, and they rode to the location together. It's fascinating to learn about the personal and professional lives of the actors behind the scenes, adding depth to the movie experience. The use of undercranking in the film creates an otherworldly atmosphere, while Karloff's kindness towards Marilyn Harris shows his warm and approachable personality off-screen. In the chilling scene of the movie, where our heroine, archaeologist Betty Curse, first encounters the menacing mummy, the direction, performance, and cinematography come together to create an unforgettable moment. The dimly lit, eerie setting of the Louisiana Bayou, with its Spanish moss-draped trees, is captured in high contrast, creating a sense of foreboding. The mummy's lumbering, otherworldly movements are accentuated by the camera's low angle, making him appear as a towering, unstoppable force. Betty's wide-eyed terror is palpable, her scream piercing the silence, drawing the audience into her terror. The film's director, Leslie Goodwins, reveals in an interview, we wanted to create a scene that would leave a lasting impression on the audience, something that would make them jump out of their seats. The Mummy's first appearance was the perfect opportunity to do just that. In another iconic scene, the Mummy, now revived and wreaking havoc, confronts Betty and her love interest, Dr. Peacock, in an abandoned cabin. The cabin, filled with shadows and creaking floorboards, becomes a battleground as the Mummy attempts to capture Betty. The camera work is frenetic, capturing the chaos and terror as the characters dodge the mummy's relentless pursuit. The scene ends with a dramatic climax as Betty and Dr. Peacoat narrowly escape, leaving the mummy to be consumed by the swamp. According to actress Peggy Morin, who played Betty Curse, that scene was incredibly intense to film. We had to move quickly and precisely to avoid the mummy, who was operated by several crew members. It was a real adrenaline rush, and I think that energy translates to the screen. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences, creating a sense of suspense and terror that has endured for decades. The movie's ability to tap into primal fears, combined with its atmospheric setting and strong performances, has made it a classic in the world of horror. In the movie, a tense atmosphere was present between Lon Chaney Jr. and co-star Evelyn Anchors, with frequent clashes despite their numerous film appearances together. Chaney had a strong desire to play the role of Quasimodo in The Hunchback of Notre Dame, even undergoing a screen test for the 1939 version, but the part went to Charles Lawton. However, he did get to recreate this role in an episode of Route 66. As for Boris Karloff, he landed the role in the criminal code due to his financial struggles. Being unable to pay his dues at the Maskers Club or afford a cup of coffee, he went to Actors' Equity and discovered the casting opportunity. 
The film marked a significant turning point in his career. Uh, come in the office. In 1944, the movie, steeped in mystery and ancient curses, made its way to the silver screen. The film, known for its chilling atmosphere and thrilling storyline, left audiences captivated. It wasn't just a show. It was an experience that lingered in the minds of viewers long after the credits rolled. The movie's influence on pop culture was palpable. The concept of a mummy's curse, born from this film, permeated popular culture, finding its way into comic books, television shows, and even video games. The film's protagonist, a mummy named Chorus, became an iconic figure, a symbol of ancient curses and eternal life. Moreover, the movie contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. The idea of archaeological exploration and the discovery of ancient civilizations fascinated audiences. The film tapped into this fascination, sparking curiosity about ancient Egypt and its rich history. The movie also explored the theme of the supernatural, a subject that has always intrigued audiences. The idea of a curse, a powerful force that could transcend time and space, resonated with viewers. It was a reminder of the unknown, the mysterious, and the unexplained. In essence, the movie was more than just a horror show. It was a reflection of societal fascinations, a contribution to cultural discussions, and a testament to the power of storytelling. It left an indelible mark on pop culture, a mark that can still be seen today. In the 1944 film, horror legend Lon Chaney Jr. shared the screen with Bela Lugosi for the fifth time, having previously appeared together in The Wolfman, The Ghost of Frankenstein. Frankenstein meets The Wolfman, Abbott, and Costello meet Frankenstein in The Black Sleep. This movie was part of the Son of Shock package of 20 titles released to television in 1958, one year after the original Shock Theater release of 52 features. Delving into the family ties of another horror icon, Boris Karloff, it's interesting to note that he was a distant cousin of Quentin Crisp. While Karloff's real name was William Henry Pratt, Crisp went by Denny's Pratt. Karloff starred in Bride of Frankenstein, while Crisp made an appearance in the remake The Bride in 1985. The Mummy's Curse, as this film is often referred to, was an intriguing blend of horror and mystery, captivating audiences with its chilling storyline and exceptional performances. The show's ability to weave together elements of suspense and terror made it a memorable addition to the horror genre. Enough! The Mummy's Curse, released in 1944, received mixed reviews from critics and audiences. Some praised the film for its thrilling and eerie atmosphere, while others criticized it for its lack of originality and coherence. Notably, the New York Times review by Bosley Crowther panned the movie, stating that it was a confused and confusing jumble of cliches. Despite the negative reviews, the film did have its supporters. Variety magazine, for instance, gave a more favorable review, highlighting the movie's effective use of atmospheric backgrounds and spooky settings. The Mummy's Curse did not receive any major award nominations or wins, which was not uncommon for horror films of the era. However, the film's modest box office success helped solidify Universal Studios' reputation as a leading producer of horror films during the 1930s and 1940s. For those involved in the film, the critical reception may have been disappointing, but the box office returns likely provided some consolation. The movie's director, Leslie Goodwins, and its lead actors, Lon Chaney Jr. and Peter Coe, continue to work in the film industry, with Chaney becoming a staple of Universal's horror franchises. In hindsight, The Mummy's Curse may not be remembered as one of the greatest horror films of all time, but it remains a notable entry in the genre's history. Its mixed reception serves as a reminder of the challenges that filmmakers face in creating a truly memorable and impactful horror movie. Hey, kill. Kill. In the 1944 film, a character named William Henry Pratt, played by Boris Karloff, plays a significant role. Interestingly, in Jeffrey Sackett's book Mark of the Werewolf, there is a character with the same name, and his description matches Karloff's persona perfectly. The movie's protagonist, Dr. James Halsey, portrayed by Dennis Moore, is seen driving a 1941 Buick convertible, adding a touch of vintage elegance to the show. Tom Tyler, another cast member, has an impressive background. 
He was the first actor to play both Captain Marvel in the serial, The Adventures of Captain Marvel, and The Phantom in the serial, The Phantom, showcasing his versatile talent in the industry. Paris and his bride, Princess Ananka, cannot be preserved. Unless... In the sweltering heat of 1944, the cast and crew of a horror movie found themselves battling more than just their roles. The film, known for its chilling supernatural tale, was plagued by a real-life mystery that left everyone spooked. During the shooting of a pivotal scene near a swamp, the lead actress, who played an archaeologist, reported an eerie encounter. She claimed to have felt a strange presence while filming, as if someone or something was watching her. Her co-star, playing the role of the cursed mummy, laughed it off, attributing it to the spooky atmosphere of the set. But things took a turn when props started disappearing. Costumes would be found in disarray, and scripts would go missing, only to reappear in the most unexpected places. The director initially brushed it off as practical jokes, but even the most skeptical crew members began to feel uneasy. One night, after a long day of shooting, the sound engineer heard strange noises coming from the prop room. Upon investigation, he found the door wide open, despite having locked it himself earlier. Inside, he discovered the mummy prop standing in the middle of the room its eyes glowing ominously in the dim light. Needless to say, he left the room in a hurry, refusing to step foot inside again. Despite these spooky occurrences, the show must go on. The cast and crew persevered, turning in their performances despite the chilling atmosphere. And so, the movie was completed, leaving behind a legacy of not just a thrilling horror story, but also of the unexplained events that added an extra layer of mystery to the film. You will look back with me across the years. Lon Chaney Jr., known for his role in The Wolfman, was honored on a 1997's commemorative postage stamp. He's one of four famous movie monsters featured, alongside Bela Lugosi as Dracula, Boris Karloff as the monster in Frankenstein, and The Mummy, who was portrayed by none other than Karloff in the original film. In The Mummy's Curse, a flashback sequence includes footage of Karloff and Tom Tyler from earlier films, making it seem as if three different actors have played the role of Karis, the mummy. In reality, stunt doubles may have also been involved. Boris Karloff's contributions to the genre were significant, earning him a plaque inside St. Paul's Church in London, also known as the Actors Church, Covent Garden. His legacy continues to resonate in the world of cinema, leaving an indelible mark that is still celebrated today. Where are they? Safely hidden in the monastery. You couldn't have carried them up alone. No, I've had... The movie, released in 1944, may not be as celebrated as some of its contemporaries. However, it certainly left an imprint on the film industry. The film's innovative use of special effects and makeup laid the groundwork for future horror films. The eerie visuals and suspenseful storytelling set a precedent for the genre, influencing filmmakers for years to come. One notable aspect of the movie is its portrayal of ancient curses and the supernatural. This theme has been revisited in numerous films and television shows, demonstrating the lasting impact of the movie. The concept of a cursed artifact or person has become a staple in horror and fantasy genres, with the movie serving as an early example. Moreover, the movie contributed to the popularization of the mummy as a monster in popular culture. Prior to its release, mummies were not commonly featured in horror films. The success of the movie led to a surge in mummy-themed films and television shows, solidifying the mummy's place in the pantheon of classic movie monsters. The movie also provided a platform for its talented cast and crew. The film's lead actor, Lon Chaney Jr., was already an established star, but the movie gave him the opportunity to further hone his craft. The film's director, Leslie Goodwins, also used the movie as a chance to showcase his directorial skills. In addition, the movie's production design and cinematography were noteworthy for their time. The film's atmospheric sets and moody lighting created a sense of dread and unease, enhancing the overall viewing experience. These techniques have since been adopted by many filmmakers, demonstrating the movie's enduring influence. In conclusion, while the movie may not be the most critically acclaimed or commercially successful, its legacy and influence are undeniable. From its pioneering use of special effects to its contribution to the horror genre, the movie left an indelible mark on film history. Its impact can still be felt today, with numerous films and television shows continuing to draw inspiration from its themes and techniques.
In the movie, a notable absence is Boris Karloff, who was replaced by Lon Chaney Jr. as the mummy. This change occurred due to a disagreement between Karloff and the director James Whale during the filming of The Old Dark House. However, Karloff and Whale later reconciled professionally for Bride of Frankenstein. Interestingly, Lon Chaney Jr. had a prolific career, appearing in 13 films with John Carradine. Their collaborations included This Is My Affair, Alexander's Ragtime Band, Submarine Patrol, Jesse Jane, Frontier Marshal, House of Frankenstein, The Mummy's Ghost, House of Dracula, Casanova's Big Night, The Black Sleep, House of the Black Death, Gallery of Horror, and Hillbillies in a Haunted House. Meanwhile, Boris Karloff's influence extended beyond the movie screen. In 2004, a photograph of him playing cricket was displayed at Lord's Cricket Ground in England. The image was included to celebrate Sussex winning the county championship for the first time, as Karloff's cricket partner, C. Aubrey Smith, had been a captain of Sussex CCC. As the story unfolds, it's clear that both actors left their mark on the film industry, each in their unique way. Mr. Walsh, unless I'm mistaken, a mummy was buried here until the bulldozer uncovered it. The 1944 film, often referred to as the movie, has left an indelible mark on many cinema lovers. Did you know that this show was actually the sixth installment in the Mummy series? It's fascinating to think about how this film contributed to the development of the horror genre. Perhaps you have a memory of watching this movie for the first time, or maybe it's a film you've returned to again and again over the years. No matter your experience, we'd love to hear from you. What was it about this film that resonated with you? How did it influence your perspective on cinema? Maybe you were captivated by the eerie atmosphere, or perhaps the performances of the actors left a lasting impression. Whatever your thoughts, we encourage you to share them with us and with other cinema lovers. By engaging with each other, we can all deepen our appreciation for the world of film. If you're new to our channel, we invite you to like, share, and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our cinematic explorations. Together, we can continue to celebrate the power and magic of movies. So, don't be shy, tell us your story. There you will find leaves of the ancient Tana tree.